Hi folks, welcome. Yes, probably you already recognize it. It's a welding machine. It's a very old model. And today I'm going to show you how to convert this, that is a transformer electrode welder into a TIG welder, which is amazing because today we are going to build all the components we need. I don't want to buy too many things at the shop. And if you already don't know what the TIG torch is and the reason why it's so important to improve the welding machine to use this kind of torch is this result. You can clearly see that we have best control on the arc flow and control the pedal and also the results are they looks amazing I mean. So actually you can already connect this TIG tungsten torch to the welding machine in this configuration without any modification but this isn't the best solution because inside the TIG torch there's tungsten point and tungsten can consume itself very quickly if we use it in this configuration. Imagine that you want to weld a little part of like stainless steel if you use a simple electrode you probably know that you have to hit many times the part until we start to create an arc and in this case we can continue to weld instead using a t-torch is absolutely a bad thing because the tungsten point can stick to the part or consume itself very quickly you can see that you need to make a scratch start at the beginning and this is bad because yeah, we, we can ruin both parts and isn't really the best solution for the TIG torch itself. So let's get started. So the plan of today is to make ourselves all the parts we need for this modification. This is a very simple thing and the first part I need is this copper pipe. I took it apart from an air conditioning unit and I can then twist it around some stainless steel tube. I can fix everything into my vise and I can then bend the copper tube around it. We need to end up to have like a spring shape and this will be used to conduct electricity. We can bend the part much easier if we hit up the copper which is amazing that con conducts heat so quickly I can bend it around and make about 19 turns around this stainless steel tube so you can see that everything is going pretty easy and once the copper coil cools down I can handle it without problems now we need to remove the inner core that is stainless steel because we need to protect it we need to insulate it from electricity so it's a good idea to cover all the stainless steel using some tape in this case some plastic tape goes all around the stainless steel and I can then place it back inside this is important because we'll work as the core usually is in ferrite but we can use stainless steel we can understand better what we are doing if you think about a fighter throwing punches to a cactus will hurt itself with his hands the same thing happens to a tick torch if it touch materials will consume itself so the solution is throwing much longer sparks this transformer welding machine has a very low voltage we have a lot of amperes but very low voltage which means it's very difficult to have a very stable and strong spark at the beginning that's the reason why we have to have a scratch start with the electrodes because we find the place where the connection is the best until the the first spark starts and then we can continue to weld the reason why it's so difficult is because we have very low voltages and very high amperes. To have a very strong spark, we need to have the opposite. Very strong, very powerful voltages, but very low amperes. For this reason, I built many years ago this machine that has so many volt that can lift my hairs up and I cut my hairs with it. So I know very well what I'm talking about. So the solution is to have a welding machine with so many amperes that can melt metal, but also high voltage that can throw sparks from the TIG pen to the material without even touching it. This can then save the tip of the electrode here inside. So yeah, let's see what I got. I 
I found on Amazon this very cheap kit. We have a driver and his flyback. This flyback came directly from an old television. We can power everything using a 12 volt brick and we can connect everything in a very simple way. The first thing we need to do is connect the center pins of this flyback and connect everything using this schematic. You cannot make mistakes, it's very simple. And after connecting all the parts, we can already turn on the flyback and see how it works. From the flyback, we have three red cables and taking the one that came from pin nine, from the bottom part of the flyback, we can see that we are having a very huge spark. It seems like plasma and we are producing around 50,000 volts, which is very impressive. The other cable that came from the top instead produced only around 3000 volts, which is still impressive. So please don't play with it. This driver and this transformer, which is a flyback transformer, can step up 12 volts from the input into 10,000, 20,000 volts in the output. So you can clearly see that the spark generated from this flyback is very similar to a plasma spark. But we need to have something stronger, something much more powerful that looks mu much more like a spark and not a, like a plasma. So I bought this high voltage capacitor and we can connect them to the output. So this is the result. We can store high voltage energy inside the capacitor and only when the two parts will connect, we will generate a very high speed Spark. and it's not anymore like a plasma but it's a real spark and that's what we need so connecting multiple capacitors in parallel can store much more energy so this would be my capacitor bank i can then use the flyback not anymore to produce plasma but instead like a real battery charger i can charge up voltage inside the capacitor and only when the two pins of the capacitor will touch will create a spark which is much different from the original plasma spark so i really suggest you don't play with these high voltages because if you have problems with your heart or any other problems you can probably die so please stay safe and don't play with it so now let's take this copper coil this is not only very nice to see a very nice design but is also very interesting for a physical phenomenon that happened inside let's see now how to connect everything to the welding machine and to the tick torch let's take the cable that comes from the welding machine and let's split it and connect the copper coil between it i also twist more copper coil around it let's take a thin copper blue cable and make eight turns around this copper coil so this is more than enough to bring electricity and to produce it choosing the distance from the spark not only increase the power but also the frequency it's important to make things much more stable so i took two nails in this case it's copper but you can use any material and with some plexiglass i build myself a little base so that i can place the two electrodes far away this is the perfect distance because we will create the perfect frequency to generate so the connection of all the parts we just made and this component which is called the spark gap is this we can connect also the blue copper coil and this is very simple you cannot make a mistake the job of the spark gap is so important first of all we can decide the frequency of the spark gap just depending on of the distance of the two nails but also this works like a little switch we can clearly understand from the sound of the sparks that the sparks turn on and off very rapidly which means we can imagine somebody that is pushing a little switch very rapidly and turns on and off and close the, the circuit here. The circuit then brings high, freak, high voltages to these blue cables we install into this homemade coil. So every time we are producing a spark here, we are producing also an electric field here that induce a field into these thicker copper cables. I know it seems magic because there isn't a real an electric connection between the, between the two coils but if we generate an electric field into the blue coil because the thicker coil is next to the first one we can then generate voltages also into the thicker coil so let's see if it works 
After connecting everything properly, let's see if we can see a spark. We just have to create a short circuit from the output of the thicker copper coil. So we can see here we are producing voltage, but yeah, isn't really enough. It's working, but it's terrible. Isn't what we need. We need something much powerful. I probably know the problem, maybe it's this copper coil. Maybe it's the core, because it's stainless steel and not ferrite. This doesn't improve the induced electric field of the coils. And also, this is too long. We need to make something smaller. Yeah, this isn't working anymore. Probably the flyback is producing so much voltage that the isolation inside broke up and we have a short circuit inside the capacitor. So I can buy a new one, a bigger one, but in this case, I want to build myself a capacitor, a high voltage one. And as always, I will use an old hard drive to do this. From the hard drive, we can take the two discs. Make sure they are made in aluminum and not in glass. Otherwise, they don't work. I decided to cut precisely some discs made with plexiglass and you can use this chart to calculate the the thickness of the insulating material between the two hard drive disks. We are building ourselves a high voltage capacitor, so it's important also to make ourselves a frame around it so we don't get shocked. So one disk goes on the side and the one on the other side. We can close the parts using some transparent plexiglass and close everything with some screws. I connect also copper cables and how our high voltage capacitor is ready. Let's connect it and test it if it really works or not. And it's perfectly working. It doesn't even warm up like the ceramic ones. So it's perfect. Now let's take instead the copper coil because yeah, we need to find a solution also to this problem. <laughs> we need to think about another method to end up to have myself a copper coil. If the first copper coil wasn't working because it was too long, um, yeah, what we are trying to make is basically a little transformer, not only a coil, but a real transformer. So, yeah, 10 years ago, we made together a transformer modifying the microwave over the transformer. So that's basically what we only need. We need then to remove the original copper coil and instead mount the famous blue cable. I can then turn the cable inside the transformer and make only 8 turns. Please follow this ratio, even if you think you can make more turns, this doesn't improve the performance of the transformer. So 8 turns with the blue cable and 18 or 19 turns with the black one is more than necessary. Now everything is taking shape and this that is mounted inside the transformer will produce much higher induction from the electric field. I mount everything on top of a wood base so it's much more organized and let's see if it works. And finally we have what we want. We have high voltage coming from the secondary cable, so, so, so from this black cable, we are producing electric field induced from the spark up into this coil. So everything is working, I can then mount everything inside a glass container so we can see what's happening and I don't get electrocuted, which isn't the bad. Wow, now that everything's inside glass, it seems like a little treasure. This is the interface between the welding machine, the vintage one, and the much modern TIG torch that is over here. We only need to add a little switch on top of the TIG torch because this driver and the flyback and, and, and everything doesn't have to stay turned on all the time that we are welding. The purpose of this transformer and all these things is just to give the first input and to throw the first spark so that we can start welding. So a little switch, probably something like this that I took apart from an iron, I can place it here on the side and every time I push it I can then let 12 volts flow through the switch and give power to the driver. 
So two very long cables are running parallel to the TIG torch and this is the transformer into the glass container I can connect cables to the welding machine I made myself these connectors dismounting a Mammoth cable and I can connect also the mass connection and the original TIG torch goes connected here in between the black transformer we just made ourselves don't forget to connect also the capacitor and here I'm ready so let's see if it works Wow, <laughs> it's my first time that I try to weld using a T-Torch and it's so different from a normal welding machine. You can clearly see that it seems like a, a huge flame is coming out the torch. You can control very easy the, the welding process. Unfortunately, this is my first time welding, so you've seen many making so many mistakes, I make holes and many other things, but I just need to practice. And I'm so proud of this little transformer that can improve the, the performance of this welding machine. But this is not all because I'm considering to start a new project and continue to modify the welding machine so that I can connect this, this a plasma torch. And usually it's impossible to connect this plasma torch to a normal welding machine because you need to produce plasma and other things but we will see this in a future project and we also need a bridge rectifier so it, it will be very interesting if you aren't already subscribed to this channel yeah consider to do so because the upcoming project is also very interesting it will be made with some stainless steel a turbojet that came from a car and many other components so all these procedures and modification to the welding machine will be so handy so at this point i leave you here my previous project check them out and see you next week with another do it yourself tutorial yeah now i just have to practice more <laughs> ciao ciao